So um, when you study the brain, you realize that there are different parts to it. There is a place we call the motor cortex, there's a place we call the parietal cortex, the cerebellum, and the basal ganglia. And what I'm interested in is understanding what do these different parts do? What do they compute? So if you can imagine that this is a giant, complicated computer, what do these individual components add to make us who we are? And if we understood that, can we understand something about diseases that affect these different parts of the brain? And so, for example, when um, a patient suffers from a damage to their cerebellum, um, we have tools to understand precisely what component of their movement has been affected. It is true that they are showing problems in their movements. They're a little clumsier, they have tremor, but is this a reflection of the loss in that com computation? So in the field of rehabilitation, which is one of the most successful techniques that we currently have for many damage, uh, damages that can happen to the brain, of often we, there's very little that we can do to help the individual other than provide them with rehabilitation. And rehabilitation is a fairly effective technique. It does help. Um, but we often don't know why. What is it doing that it's making things better? And studies like what we do and other people do on understanding the control of movements in healthy individuals and in patients is directed in understanding how do we help the individual recover when there is something that has gone wrong in their brain, when a stroke has happened or um, some disorder has affected a part of their brain. By understanding what does that part normally do we hope to find better techniques to help the brain recover some of that function.